Hi there, in this video I'm going to be showing you the one to many relationship in ASP.NET Core. Firstly, I'm going to be creating a model, two models, and then I'm going to be showing the data of these models in the view pages. Firstly, I'm going to be opening up a project that I recently did in the which actually was in the previous video where I just created one controller with the CRUD operations so we have a customer controller here and I'm going to be adding a one to many relationship model to this customer model firstly I'm just going to be running the project to see what we have there So this is the main page, I'm just going to go to the customer tab. Okay, so I have no customer created here, but this is the page that we did in the previous video. So I'm just going to go to the customer model. So this is the customer model. I'm just going to be adding uh, an additional model to it, like a status model for the customer status. So this is basically uh, this is a one to many relationship because one custom one customer can have only one status, like a new customer or a loyal customer, but uh, one status can be connected to different types to different amount of customers so I, I need a, an int id property for the status and of course I'm gonna I'm gonna need to connect the status to the customer model so one status can be connected to Diff, uh, to many customers so I'm just going to be a property of customers which basically should be a list of customers And the get set attributes at the end. And of course, I'm going to be needing to connect the customer to the status. So firstly, one status, one customer has only one status and it is connected with the status by a status ID property. And this is connect, being connected to a status, a property of type sta status. We need to write down here a data annotation with a foreign key, which refers to the status ID. So this was it for the models. 
whenever we create a new model, we need to go to the context. This is the migrations folder, folder in the data folder. No, in the my in the data folder to the context file, we need the DB set with the status type. So an instance of the status model. And also uh, for the for this tutorial, we are going to be needing to store the status model with some data, so we can demonstrate better the connection to of the customer with the statuses. So we needed this on model creating method. And here, what basically we got to do is just fill the model for the status model with some data. Model builder that entity that status that has data. Okay, wrong parenthesis. Basically, we just write here a new status. The status had an ID and a name property. So we can make an ID equals to one. And then name equals to new customer or something. We can copy this down and add the new status of ID of two and the name. We can name it loyal customer. Okay, so we need to run the project. So to see if we have made uh, an error and then we can just go to the package manager console to add, to add the migration so add migration and the name for our mi migration I'll just name it a second migration. Build succeeded, so now we just need to update the database. Okay, everything is fine. We can just go to the customer controller now. 
basically what we need to do is we need to import the data the status data in the create in the create function here so we can store in the view data we'll name it like status and we're going to import here from the statuses context from the context that status is the list with each of the statuses that we created and uh, we'll take the statuses by their id and we'll display them uh, by their name and below uh, we can also in the post function we also can add their uh, we're gonna add here the status ID which just basically takes the status ID from the form that we submit this works uh, this was okay somehow we just need to go to the create view and we'll just add another input for the status ID We'll just name it status, the client's status. And instead of the input, we can add the select tag. We're going to write here the ASP4 status ID, which basically connects this to the status ID property. And the items in this select list are going to be in the ASP items uh, view back that status that we created in the create function. This, okay, we can just add the class form control in order to style it with the boost bootstrap library. Okay, uh, so I forgot here before, in the status property, we can add a, a question mark, which basically means that the status can be no, null. And we need to add a new migration. Uh, this, this has to be done because it causes some errors sometimes when we don't make it, this property nullable. So I just ran the project to check if everything was okay, and now I'm just going to be needing to add the migration. I'll just name it third migration. Yes, the second migration was the previous one. So third migration. Build succeeded. Just going to be needing to update the database one more time. Everything is fine. So I just need to check it now. Check now the create view. Okay, so I'm just gonna create a customer here, name it Sean, a Gmail, an email address. Then here in the client status, we see the loyal customer and the new customer that we had. Okay, so everything is okay instead of the client status column, which we need to store in the index view. Firstly, we need to go to the customer controller. Or we just need to add here, to include here the status.
Okay, now to the indexed view. Firstly, we need a, a header for the customer's sort customer's status. And then here we just need to get the status from the customer. So just customer that status. I think then that name was the name of the status. Yes. So that name. And if we run the project now, if we run the project firstly and then re reload the page. I think everything has to work now. The client's status has to be shown here. Okay, so everything works okay. And this was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.